I never studied no books about these wigglers. What I know about them is just self-experience. They got books on them. Them books is wrong. I'm Acadia Einstein, and this is Strangeful Things. Welcome, everybody, to Strangeful Things, where we talk about Wigglers and <laughs> don't all explain. All the time. We're not explaining what a Wiggler is whatsoever. I'm Acadia Einstein, and I'm here with Shuey. Howdy. And uh, uh, fairly regularly, we bring you a – Jesus, how many fucking things can I knock off my desk in one go? I don't know. How many did you? I guess two. <laughs> That kind of answers my own the question. Too. There. Yeah, wow. that's not. That's not <laughs> look at that. We're solving mysteries. This this is a game. This is a show where we solve mysteries. Um, so <laughs> real fast. Yeah, really, really, really fast. Um, we talk about true crime and weird shit. And uh, this time we're definitely in the weird shit category. But it's not ghosts or aliens or anything like that. It's just yeah. people. People really, really. Yeah. F- fucking weird people bizarre bizarre but first because we know you care we have to talk Mm. about what's new and good and i guess i'm gonna say my new and good is that when i moved back from new york i knew i was missing clothes but i couldn't figure out where (laughs) they were and i found them Wow. I found the clothes. Yep. You still have your lucky so, shirt? Oh, God, no. It disintegrated. <laughs> it, it made its way. I guess it would form. have. It, it, it was so overworn. <laughs> the, the, the story of that is, is that I had a shirt in college. It was a, it was a Patagonia shirt like flannel shirt but it was a really nice yep. material it was like the best shirt i owned and it was purplish and uh it 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 was like undefeated in if you went out <laughs> that night wearing the shirt when you came back you were not alone and not people alone. started calling it the hookup shirt and then people actually started to want to borrow it and then did borrow it and then shuey <laughs> went as me for halloween one year and wore that shirt and it was a good costume because everybody knew who he was. <laughs> yeah, I, I always dress as my idols. <laughs> then you. <laughs> my, <laughs> that's uh, what was. Every other Halloween, he was Stuart Pankin from Not Necessarily the News. <laughs> <laughs> that was Rich Hall. Oh, Rich Hall, yes. And I can invent, the inventor of the Sniglet. The Sniglet, yes, exactly. Well, what's new and good with you? Because because that Sniglets are old and good. Old and very old. Um, yeah, a uh, couple new new and goods. I got I got my house painted, the inside. So now, whereas every room in the house used to be blue, now there's a whole bunch of different colors. Well, that's exciting. And the other thing was that I got my Xbox Series X. So now I am fully nerded up on all the latest generation uh, nonsense. What are you going to play on that? Um, Forza Horizon 4 comes out next month and uh, Halo Infinite. And then I still got to do like Gears of War, like the last couple I never played and stuff like that. Mm. Good stuff. Can't all be dead by daylight. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I got to have something else in my life. And if it's just another stupid video game, then that's all it's going to be. I mean, technically, yes, it could. But (laughs) (laughs) if you're going to. All right, let's get on with the uh, whatever we're talking about. The show? Yeah, that. usually, Usually, I know sell the opening quote. Until much later in the show, and then I half ass refer back to it. But it always means something. And <laughs> like it, it is always genuinely about what's happening in the show. Except yeah, 
I have to mention this one this time because the <laughs> quote is from a movie and it's from one of the old geezers in the movie, but the movie was specifically not made about the topic that we're going to be discussing. Now, right. I'm going to sure that we uh, make sure that we link the movie in the show notes, because if you want to subject yourself to a whole lot of real life Grandpa Simpsons, <laughs> It's torture, but hilarious. At the it's same time. excruciating and hilarious. Uh, it is. It's a. Uh, you won't know if you spent that fifty-six minutes in a good way or a bad way when it's over. <laughs> but it, it's only fifty-six in it, minutes. It wraps up quick, so you can you can watch yeah. in no time, and it's infinitely quotable if you can understand what they're saying. Well. <laughs> That whole thing is just a side road through the city. What city? Well, you might ask what city. I mean, Shui, you won't ask because you read the title of the script. But everybody else? Right, right. I don't have to ask. Just think about all the amazing cities that we have in our culture. Like, just in music, I can think of Heartbeat City, the album by the Cars, Paradise City, Uh the song from Guns N' Roses. Hot Child in the City. That's... Sure. I, and I now we'll just move on to TV and movies like New Jack City, Spin City, Sin City, Babe, Pig in the City, Sex in the City, oh, Sex and the City, whatever. And that's just things that end with the word city. Our cultural landscape would really open up if we could have city appear anywhere in the title. Yeah, but that's not really like City that, that Slickers defeats. or City Slickers 2. Yeah, but that's not. All right. So you just invented a really fun game to play in 1996 in a bar when you didn't have the internet and you would actually have to think of the movies. Oh, yeah. But the overall point, it, that ruined every. What are you doing, bars now? I don't know. I like that. Just, just ruined everything I ever had with anything was just knowing random shit, and now everybody mm-hmm. knows random shit, and nobody could call you out on it because they'd have to go to the fucking exactly. library you to figure just, it out, and stuck. nobody was gonna. Right? If you were stuck, you just made something up. <laughs> and that's why, right, like when I when I research for the show, I'm always worried about getting my facts right. Whereas everybody else is just, Oh, don't believe anything you say on the internet <laughs> that you read on the internet. So what am I, the fuck am I doing researching like an asshole? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> while there are a lot of amazing cities that we could visit through our, lo- our mutual love of media <laughs> this week, we're going to nub city. <laughs> Cause nub this city. Is a show about gritty realism sometimes, and this is one of those times. You said no grit this week. We have had so much grit this season. So much. Oh, and also we (laughs) forgot Detroit Rock City. Fuck. I used to listen to Destroyer. So Detroit Rock City is from the Kiss album Destroyer. I used to listen to it every night, and... I have come to learn that Kiss was not subtle at all. Huh. And one of the songs on that side of the album. Oh, you mean was, you've listened to the actual record? Like this was not even a tape? No. What the fuck? <laughs> what do you think I was? The King of England? I didn't have tapes. I had a bunch of Kiss albums. <laughs> King of England. Stacked up. Stacked up on the thing so that when one was done, the next one would drop. Oh, man. And that's how I went to... St- yeah. So, and plus I was little uh, and I don't, I mean, I, I don't know, but anyway, I'm pretty sure I got the albums off the Columbia record and tape club. And my mom had to dig me out of the financial <laughs> peril that I'm sure I caused the family. You as and a result. every other kid back then. Yes. They even did that on the Goldbergs. It was so yeah, they ubiquitous. <laughs> and then it, like, but it was not as bad as when I called the phone sex line, oh. which I thought I was being smart because it was just a regular phone number. Like it wasn't a 900 number, right, but it turned right. out that it was in like Suriname and oh. cost a million dollars. And uh, that was <laughs> the equivalent of a that, million that dollars a, today. That was, you never, you never want your mother coming at you with waggling a phone bill and a disappointed oh, look no. on her face. No. Yeah. No. Uh, oh. So, one of the Kiss songs, because I, 
it was called Great Expectations, and it's mm-hmm. not a Charles Dickens thing. <laughs> but this is what little kid me listened to. I had no idea what it was about because all I was waiting for was for God of Thunder to come on, which was on that side of the album. Right. But listen to these, listen to these oh so subtle lyrics. And they're sung by Gene Simmons, which makes it extra gross. Yeah, yeah. You're sitting in your seat, and then you stand and clutch your breasts. Our music drives you wild along with the rest. You watch me singing this song. (laughs) (laughs) You see what my mouth can do, and you wish you were the one I was doing it to. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's really just coming out there with it. Oh, yeah. Except That's it's just, all like, like embellished uh, and arranged with a choir and like those big like church bells. So it's even <laughs> worse than you think. And oh. so I'll probably link that song in the show notes too. Yeah, I had a friend not? go to That'll see them confuse. in one of their uh, comeback tours in like the late nineties or something. And he's like, "There's just something about like dudes and and back then, like in the in their sixties, like like." just like gyrating their freaking wangs at you in these leather pants. It's like, <laughs> just so sad. I went, you know what? That I will actually tell, I will legitimately tell a story on the Patreon about when we went to the Kiss concert in Boston. Um, but I'm not going to tell it on here because it would take too long. All but right. let's just say it involves a bridge and P. Hmm. There's a little teaser. That's patreon.com slash strangeful. All right. You used to play that game where you... Never mind. No. <laughs> but the fact that what you're talking about, Kiss, is actually kind of a good segue into what we're actually talking about. Okay, because one good. of the most famous things about Kiss is Gene Simmons' tongue. Now, I don't think it made him sing any better, but it did con- like comprise about 40% of his entire <laughs> <laughs> So it was pretty valuable. In fact... There were rumors in the 70s that his tongue had been surgically enhanced somehow, <laughs> which, <laughs> how? Yeah, exactly. I don't fuck. How do you do that without leaving a scar? I legitimately worked for, like, the like one of the best... If somebody needed their tongue surgically enhanced in the, in the on their earth... They yeah. would have gone to my old boss, and he. It's not a thing. You just can't. But anyway, um, he took out insurance on his tongue, probably because he was afraid that he would get oral cancer from shoving it up lots of hairy seventies butt cracks <laughs> after the show. <laughs> and Betty Grable, some old timey star, insured her legs. Uh-huh. And Jamie Lee Curtis actually got her legs insured by legs pantyhose when she started doing commercials for them. And Fred Astaire took out policies on his legs and his arms, but his arms were worth less. Now, I guess he figured if his arms got chopped off, he could still do like the Irish jig or something. Um, <laughs> Springsteen insured his voice, but I'm not sure exactly how he would collect like, if his voice got good, they'd pay out. Like, the, I mean, it. I gotta get worse than this. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, if someone punched him in the larynx, and all of a sudden he sounded <laughs> like, "Hey, what's going on?" If he if he sounded like George from Seinfeld, this is the summer <laughs> of Bruce. <laughs> um, but like, Dolly Parton insured her boobs. Yeah, true. Holly Madison insured her boobs, and I don't think anybody that wasn't watching TV in 2008 remembers who the fuck Holly Madison was. Who is Holly Madison? She was one of the three playmates that was married to oh, Perpetual Grub, oh, Hugh Hefner. Yeah, that, that, yep. oh, it was yep, yep, those yep. shows. Yep. And oh. uh, Claudia Schiffer insured her whole face. She had to have collected. The, oh, wow. That's harsh. It is. But, That's I, harsh. but I think it's there accurate. Was a, there was a there was a rider in the in the policy that said she was not allowed <laughs> to go <laughs> fraternize with people who had pet chimpanzees because <laughs> Uh, 
for these fancy people. Oh, by the way, yeah, a chimpanzee ripped that lady's face off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I know why that. I feel In the need to explain all the jokes this this week, but whatever. Yeah. Maybe I, I, I don't know why. But anyways, these fancy people whose limbs and whatnot are obviously worth a lot, right? Are very different from us regular jerks because we're not worth a ton. Like we're in North Carolina. So if we got our arm chopped off at work, which admittedly, given the fact that we're project managers would be very difficult to do, we would get $220,880 for our trouble. That that doesn't seem like a a lot for that much trouble. Um, What would it be in New York? (laughs) In New York... It would be $252,299. Now, the average in the country is only 169000 Oh, jeez. So it could be worse. The lowest is Alabama, of course. <sighs> you only get forty eight grand for your arm there. Everything's less but than Alabama. If... <laughs> If you're a slot machine repairman in Las Vegas and there's an accident and you become a one-armed bandit. (laughs) (laughs) What if it's the wrong arm? You're like, damn it. Oh, that's true. Damn it. Um, You get $859,000. Yeah, that's Wow. And they got amounts for lots of your parts. If you lose a testicle while working for the federal government, you'll get 98 grand. So... Uh, obviously, there's a sliding scale. I'm going to go look for on how much stuff is worth. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I have to imagine. Like, okay, so if if we got our arm chopped off, right, we'd type slower. Well, everything else would be difficult too. Just yeah, living but, is more difficult. Well, what if you're a juggler? <laughs> like if you're well, if your old job is juggler, you should definitely get more. You're only going to be juggling two, money. maybe three things at a time tops now. Right. No one's going to go see a one arm juggler unless he can juggle fucking crazy shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He has to put his life in danger to make money at this point. <laughs> but um, and, and yeah, like I, I can understand what you're saying. Like some parts. This, are much more necessary, you know, for your for you to live based on what you yeah. do than it just it, it feels like it should be a sliding scale, I guess is my overall all point. Cuz you can't just yeah. And you should know ahead of time what you're what you're in for. <laughs> so Which, like you get like your, your job as project manager and they're like all right, an arm's worth 78,000, a uh, leg is worth 120. Yeah. If you just lose a finger, that's a grand. Um, like, yeah, you just get like a price sheet when you start. You got a sheet, yeah. So that way, if you say something like, "I'd give my right arm to get this project done on time," oh, I'm really? Like, that money could come in handy. Let's do it. That's right. I'd give my right arm to be ambidextrous. Wow. <laughs> anyway, now we're going to Nub City. Nub City, here we come. <laughs> Nub City's actually called. Vernon, Ugh. Vernon, Florida. It's in oh, the Florida Vernon, Panhandle. Florida. And it's not even near the ocean. It's right in the middle of a bunch of hot, sweaty, swampy nonsense. <laughs> and it's so not great that in 2010, only 687 people lived there. And in 2000, there were 743. So People are leaving Vernon in comparative droves. I, 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 I have to I have to put in another theory, having seen the movie. Yeah. That that attrition may not yeah. have been from leaving. Oh yeah, that's true too. <laughs> uh, you can be right there. Uh, yeah, the movie was really informative. Yes. Kinda. Yeah, so well. Vernon became a town in the 1880s. And these same people were there, just so you know. Yes, the same, yes. <laughs> Holmes Creek went by Vernon. 
mm-hmm. which was apparently very important for people shipping alligator gizzards to the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> Who the fuck knows what the fuck? <laughs> it was a creek. So it was important, but it was at least like, it was the county seat of Washington County Ooh. until those fuckers from Chipley <laughs> stole that from them in 1921. You really did your Chipley research, is there. man. And the worst, the worst part about it is, is that you'd like to think that it was some like Machiavellian, like political move that right, that right. caused all this, but it wasn't. They just voted. Yeah, I yeah, know. <laughs> Vernon sucks. Let's make it Chipley. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. So all in all, the saga of Vernon is not what you would call a huge success story. It's, it, it's not a boom town. The whole place is only 4.7 square miles. So, yep, that's, oh, wow. uh, that's not big. And uh, the high school, which must have only seven kids in it, <laughs> the, the, teams are, the teams are called the Yellow Jackets. But the sign going into town says that the Lady Jackets – were the class two A basketball champs in the nineteen ninety nine two thousand nice. season? So, go jackets! They call Ooh. themselves jackets. They're in Florida. Nobody has a jacket. Like why? <laughs> like I get it's supposed to be yellow jackets, but that's <laughs> oh. <laughs> where the Vernon mittens. What's a mitten? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but the home of the champion lady jackets puttered along in whatever ways small towns kept themselves afloat before meth was invented. (laughs) But in the 50s, things started turning even further south for Vernon. Uh You see, Holmes Creek was not just for gizzard shipping. (laughs) There were steamboats. What? 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 There were steamboats. There were steamboats. I don't know fucking why, but there were steamboats. Like, it's legit. It's a fact. Steamboats. Chugging down the old Holmes Creek. I don't think a big boat, if you're a creek, you shouldn't have a lot of boat traffic. You should only have, like, people fishing. Right. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Boats and canoes and shit. Yeah, but nobody's, nobody would go, oh, yeah, well, you know what? The backbone of America is the Mississippi Creek. Like, there's not, <laughs> there's got to be a fucking <laughs> rule for what's what. <laughs> for what's what. Now, but the creek is a very important part of the town because right. even though it's super tiny, it has a lot of boat launches. And oh. uh, at the at the campground that my grandparents owned, the boat launch was my grandfather was in charge of that, which consisted of hopefully someone in the camp telling him that someone was launching their boat so that he could then take 400 hours to walk down to the boat launch and make them give him two dollars that was his whole that was his money not to mention the fact that oh so uh, i'll do that on the patreon too because i don't want to i don't want to out my grandfather for fucking crimes against environmental humanity that he oh all right so all right I don't know why. It's because I'm thorough. I do really good research. You do. If 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 you're in if you're in Vernon and you've got mm-hmm. a boat and you go fuck, how am I going to get this boat into the creek? <laughs> you have a plethora of options. Let me let me let me tell you. Boynton Cutoff Landing sounds nice. Potter Springs Road, Shell Ferry Landing, mm-hmm. Strickland Landing, mm. Miller's Ferry Road Bridge. Now. The ones I've mentioned so far, they were all free, but Miller's Ferry charges $2 to launch a boat and $1 to fish off the bank. And the and the description says, unimproved dirt ramp with parking for six to eight vehicles with trailer. Honor system for paying in metal box on entry. Sign says, do not enter after dark. So I assume it's also haunted. <laughs> they got an honor like system. Like, what kind of asshole would be like, I'm going to give him the dollar. I'm going to fish and I'm going to catch myself more than a dollar's <laughs> worth of fish. And these guys are so lazy, they wouldn't even go to, like, pick up the box every day or whatever. Yeah, at least my grandfather would eventually make it down there. <laughs> right. And he knew he'd get him eventually because they had to come back because that's where their car was. Right. So they also had Live Oak Landing, oh. very steep. Sperling oh. Landing, High Tower Springs, Brunson Landing. Mind you, the whole town. 
is only 4.7 square miles and only one ed- border of it is is the is the creek fanning branch that said old honor system <laughs> It said, it said old honor system lockbox there, but not used. So if a lock bo- if an honor system box isn't used, it just means that the people aren't honorable. Like it's not the box's <laughs> fault. The box didn't do anything. Yeah. It's not like they, it's not like it was spitting the money back out and people went, ah fuck it, that box is too ornery. <laughs> so then there was the Holmes Creek Canoe Livery, Vernon Park. Oh. Vernon Park, also known as Miller Landing said that the ramp will be crowded with swimmers in the summer, which fucking ugh. That sounds like a don't beach. S- <laughs> don't swim in the creek. Like, ugh. Then Culpepper Landing, which was my favorite, and Cotton Landing. Uh, but at least they no longer need to be worried about getting hit by a steamboat. Constantly, <laughs> since a boat ramp is really just a driveway that leads to certain death for motorists. Maybe they'll make money robbing the drowned people who drive into the creek accident. <laughs> they just give shitty directions. Hey, it's your third yeah. left. Oh, this is a boat launch. Oh. <laughs> oh, I mean, there, were, there weren't any swimmers like the sign said. Uh. <laughs> I mean, that. Would, all right, so that would be a good racket. Also, that would be a good episode of, like, Creep Show. <laughs> I feel like the jerks. Oh, no, you got to take the detour. What's the detour? Certain death. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but the so they had to do something like that, robbing the drowned right. people, because the train stopped stopping in Vernon, which honestly, what the fuck would they stop there for in the first place? I mean, like, right. by the way, remember, listeners, I am from a shitty little town. That is true. But I was self-aware enough to know that without the summer people in Sebago Lake, Wyndham, Maine would have been Vernon, Florida, Jr. Like, <laughs> there was nothing. Our our mall ugh, it had a movie theater <laughs> with two screens. Two. Ooh. Yep. Ugh. Diggity. And we didn't even, in Wyndham, we didn't have a sawmill like they do in Vernon. I mean, like Vernon used to have. It closed in the 50s, and that's where everybody had worked for the most part. So you're probably seeing where this is going to go. But fuck, also in my research, the Teddy Bear Timber Corporation Incorporated is in business in Vernon as we speak. They say that 20-inch logs are no problem. Custom-built bonds are their specialty, and they cut Cypress fireplace mantles to order. But they were probably not around in the 50s, so the town was in big, fat trouble, job-wise. I sort of want to make them the sponsor of the show, unironically. Unironically? The Teddy Bear Timber Corporation? You mean you're yeah. ready to experience the look and feel of real wood? <laughs> not only do we clear your lot, well, we take your trees and transform them into the lumber that will make your place sparkle for you. We also design for you. Give us a try. We're ready to make you happy. Just give us a call. More services available. Just ask. Ooh, more services. There, I just did a free... That's all shit that was on their website, which someone needs to fix their website because when you click to another page, it's just a blank HTML page with words on it and you don't see the header anymore. Um, And I now care more about the Teddy Bear Timber Corporation than pretty much every other company on earth because <laughs> they're trying. And I, I bet... I uh, a nice cypress mantle would look good if if that's the kind of thing you thought would look good. Now I could see that. Eh. Things in the town became a little desperate, and necessity being the mother of invention, the Nub Club was born. <laughs> it, it's a, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna say a lot of things that have to do with Nub. <laughs> it's a mystery how it started. <laughs> Maybe someone was swimming in the crick and the last steamboat out chopped off his hand as it, <laughs> as it steamed down river. Or maybe it was some sly fox who knew that he could spare his off hand if there was some cash in it for him. And this is not the first time people have tried to scam insurance companies. And you got some examples, didn't you? Oh, I do. After my uh, exhaustive research. Yeah. A gambling addiction can be a slippery slope into heinous debt. 
But one sly pensioner decided to use fake insurance claims to cover her casino catastrophes. When 72-year-old Isabel Parker ran out of funds to support her addiction, she faked no less than 49 slip-and-fall scams at supermarkets, department stores, and off-licenses in three U.S. states between 1993 and 2000, newspapers had reported. So Four. Okay. Why didn't she just fall in the casino? Why did she go so yeah. far out of her way? Oh, no, because it's all cameras. Yeah, that's, you need that's, to you, you need to, to fall very, someplace with yeah, and they carpet. You know, there's no hard floors you can easily slip on. Yeah, that's true too. Mm. They're always thinking. What else you got? All right. Well, four California women were convicted of this. Is like that thing they used to do on Stern, where the guy would read the stories and they'd have to pick out which one was real or fake. I don't even. Know. <laughs> Four California women were convicted of wire fraud after they allegedly invented a man, named him Jim Davis, then faked his death, and then even staged a bogus funeral with actors paid to pose as mourners. This was in order to claim $1.2 million in life insurance benefits. They they killed the guy who invented Garfield? (laughs) That is Jim Davis. <laughs> well, he probably deserved it. I hate Mondays. <laughs> but I love lasagna. <laughs> From the FBI report, the con artist was so unnerved by this that they had a coffin supposedly holding the remains of Jim Davis unearthed. They filled the casket with a mannequin and cow parts. To ensure that the proper weight, that it was the proper weight. They then sent it to a crematory. Then they filed the phony paperwork stating that he had been cremated and the ashes were scattered over the Pacific Ocean. Why the fuck didn't they do that in the first place? And what are you putting a mannequin in there for? If the if the police had, you know would think to test anything, they'd be like, "Hey, there's a lot of plastic in this guy's ashes." Yeah, that uh, doesn't make any sense. Like, I mean, the cow parts was a good thing. Yeah, yeah, to at least give it some bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. some and they could have said material. Well, why is this why is this coffin filled with all this cow stuff? Well, the cause of death was <laughs> the the cow came at him with a hand grenade, but since it didn't have thumbs, it wasn't exactly sure how to use it and they and they both blew up together. Both exploded, yeah. If I was going to scam Makes insurance, sense. what would Makes I do to scam me. insurance? I guess I would just lie on my life insurance form that you got to fill out to get life you know insurance. How much they test and shit now. You can't get away yeah, with anything. I'm fine with all my all my blood tests. Like all my my blood is fine. It's what what it's running through that's fucking a wreck. And it's what like it's encased in. I have really really good champagne in a very very bad bottle. That's fine. <laughs> that's my offensive diagnosis. You look at it. Yeah. That's high test gas you've got in those rotten pipes, well, Mister. I, I have swill in a plastic jug. There you go. <laughs> Well, <laughs> by the way, speaking of plastic jug, I, I for some reason I went back to watching those fucking assholes from Alaska that we watched that time we went to the convention. Oh God! And I, I almost did it. I almost did yesterday. Oh, I'm more mad than I was. I was oh, so fuck. close. Fuck them! Oh, I kind of want to see what the younger one looks like. All right. Well, <laughs> as far as Nub City is concerned, after the first person. <laughs> did it word got around <laughs> that if you join the nub club you could do all right for yourself now mm. i'm gonna let all the people who listen to our show who think that uh, poor people and people on welfare are quote lazy <laughs> you listen to the rest of this story and you take some time to ponder how lazy you have to be to decide that instead of doing something worthwhile like charging for the fucking boat landing or starting a business that unfortunately thinks teddy bears are made of wood. Um, you do what these folks did. Like if I, if it had been me, I would have just gone to one of the boat landings and said, yeah, it's $2. Just give it to me. 
what are they going to say? Oh, do you have a bolt landing badge? No, fuck you. I'm, yeah. It's my landing. <sighs> Who would know? In 1972, an author named Barbara something, and I can't, I think her name was Healy, but it was weird because the guy in the story's name was Healy. Anyway, she wrote a story for the New York Times about Joe Healy, who was an insurance detective, not to be confused with Inspector Turlington from American Dad, who was a <laughs> resort detective. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you send one of those turkey sandwiches all Turlington's way? Anyway, <laughs> Joe Healy explained some telltale signs of nubbers and how they sometimes get caught. Usually take off the thing they need least, like their left hand rather than their white right one. If they have a sit-down job, they'll take off a leg or a foot, not an arm. More often than not, too, maiming oneself for insurance money is a white-collar practice. <laughs> he says, remarking that a few years back, I found uh, an ownership of a car dealership who put out his eyes for four hundred grand to buy a ranch. Blue-collar workers generally need their limbs and eyes to do their work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if if oh my get, God. one of my eyes would be worth a fucking house that doesn't even have stairs in it. <laughs> so far, cow hand grenade attack is better than all of these. See, he only <laughs> said Nub City started small. The first claim uh-huh. was about 5000 which would be 43000 today. And it wound up, wound up with big even. money. 300k which in today's money would be 2.6 million what but he didn't he didn't work for all the insurance companies and no shit (laughs) according to the tampa bay times during the apex of the nub city chopathon vernon (laughs) from the florida panhandle in general claimed two-thirds of all the loss of limb insurance claims in the country oh my god now, in that article, a local insurance guy, L.W. Birdshaw, he, now he's a local guy from Vernon. He's asked about his customers, who included a man who sawed off his left hand at work, a man who shot off his foot while protecting chickens, a man who lost his hand while trying to shoot a hawk, who seems like he was helping the, the chicken guy, because it would make sense that if they were trying to protect the chicken from the hawk, <laughs> and they were just bad at shooting things. <laughs> a man who somehow lost two limbs in an accident involving a rifle and a tractor. It's like what would happen if amateurs did jackass. Like, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Without the clown training and stunt training and all that other shit. Then there was the guy. I I can't even imagine a rifle and a tractor. Like The tractor was coming at me. I had no choice. I was going to (laughs) shoot it, but then I realized the best thing I could do was shoot my own foot and have the bullet bounce off and go up under the tractor. It was really genius on my (laughs) part, but unfortunately, the tractor then ran over my arm, so now I didn't have a foot or (laughs) But not like Earl. I don't know if his name was Earl, but he bought a policy and then 12 hours hours later, shot off his foot while aiming at a squirrel. Where was the squirrel? Was he standing on it? These are thin. And there's one... I can't read the last guy. (laughs) Shui, you read it. I can't. All right. There was another man who took out insurance with 28 or 38 companies, said Mary Armstrong, an insurance official for Liberty National. He was a farmer and ordinarily drove around the farm in his stick shift pickup. This day... The day of the accident, he drove his wife's automatic transmission car and he lost his left foot. (laughs) Jesus. If he'd been driving his pickup, he'd have to have that foot for the clutch. He also had a tourniquet in his pocket, conveniently. We asked why he had it and he said, snakes, in case of snake bite. He'd taken out... I got nipped. (laughs) He'd taken out so much insurance, he was paying premiums that cost more than his income. And he wasn't poor either. He was like middle class. He collected more than a million from all the companies. 
It was hard to make a jury believe a man would shoot off his foot. I would believe that in a second. I would have, he would have been 100% guilty as soon as the, I always carry a tourniquet in case of getting bit by a snake. <laughs> like, if he had, the fuck, oh like, my God. I want to know how tourniquet e it what? Can you buy an actual tourniquet? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, because, you know, we only see him from TV and, and it's always like someone ripping a shirt with their teeth. A <laughs> shirt. Yeah. And then taking a stick and tying yeah, it yeah, and yeah. twisting it. Yeah. And then having Bear Grylls come and piss on him. Yeah, I didn't um, know that you could buy yeah. like a pre-made tourniquet kit. Yeah, apparently it's a uh, tourniquet. It's tourniquet. Yep, you can get you can get the cat combat application tourniquet Gen Seven uh, off <laughs> Amazon for twenty eight dollars oh, and ninety cents. I don't want. I want cheap. Yeah. Look at the oh, profit the you're making tourniquet. on that. Yeah, this one this one's only nine ninety nine. It's one handed oh. too, which would be handy. Because if be you need it, you probably you only have a hand. hand. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I bet you won't see a bunch of fucking YouTubers testing that. They're always like, oh, I'm going to test everything at <laughs> fucking Why Amazon has for survival. See if they do. Yeah. I should start leaving nasty comments. You should hire like a horror, a horror makeup guy or something, a special oh, effects that's, guy. That's good. And thinking. pretend to start something like that. Well, I like, I like that. See how many people actually cut off their own hands. <laughs> Can you pretend that you're testing kidding, a tourniquet? Uh, uh, now, there's a book called Accidentally on Purpose, The Making of a Personal Injury <laughs> Underworld in America by Ken Dornstein, Ooh. which I totally want to read now. But they hired John Healy, the smart guy we mentioned before, to try and get them out of paying the nub club. And Healy was not kind to the town as related in the book he observed that vernon's second largest occupation seemed to be watching hound dogs mating in the town square (laughs) and that its largest was self-mutilation for monetary gain to sit in your car in a sweltering summer evening on the main street in nub city he wrote watching anywhere from eight to to a dozen cripples walking along the street gives the place a ghoulish, eerie atmosphere. Which, <laughs> honestly, now I kind of want to make that a horror movie, but instead of them doing it themselves, like, they, they there's just a really evil, like, traffic like cop. Sa- everybody has to sacrifice something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah something like that. Like, there's only, like, like one parking spot in the whole town, but people still need need to get their shit done. So they're, like, instead of having to, like, go to the meter, they have to, like, oh, well, I I, I swear I was just leaving. Well, I'm sorry. Hold out your hand. (laughs) Patent pending. Copyright? What was it? Don't steal our movie. Sons of bitches. (laughs) It's already gone. I know somebody already stole my movie where the the jerk in the office that I already uh, like always sexually harasses the women in the office and and complains about how they all get their periods at the same time. Um, yeah. They cast a they cast a spell so that they do all get their periods at the same time, but they all use his blood. So he starts to die. Oh, I like that. Yeah, see, that could be like a good horror comedy. Hey, see? Look at that. We're branching out. No stealing it. You fuckers, listen. You can't see me pointing, but I'm I'm audibly audibly pointing at you. Anyway, <sighs> we're ruined. Cut that out now. Uh, the Nub Club got away with it. But eventually they had to stop the scam because the insurance companies made the premium so high they couldn't afford them. And in some cases they were just like, "No, we're not going to we're not going to insure your left big toe mr field goal kicker with your right foot for a living guy and (laughs) the town had to go back to being a steamboatless wreck until hollywood Uh. came a knocking see in 1981 (laughs) errol morris who i had never heard of and i'm sure you have never heard of but is apparently pretty famous decided he wanted to make a documentary about nub city he made the documentary The Thin Blue Line. 
It successfully argued that a man was wrongly convicted for murder by a corrupt justice system in Dallas County, Texas. He also made a brief history of time, that one about Stephen Hawking that I'm sure many, many people have pretended they watched. And I pretended won an to Oscar read the book, too. Yeah, see? That's one of the books that you just have on your shelf. And then if somebody yeah. asks you a question, you just go, who would have won in a fight between Stephen Hawking and Christopher Reeve? And then while they're disgusted, <laughs> you, you completely fucking derail the conversation and you don't get called out. So – <laughs> he, he won an Oscar in 2004 for the movie about M- General McNamara, that Vietnam guy. We should do an episode oh, on that, that debacle sometime. Yeah, so he made that. Oh, yeah, the thing of the Vietnam. Oh, my God, what a yeah. mess. So he went to Vernon to make a movie about the nubs, but they didn't take <laughs> kindly to him. Huh. I knocked on the door of a double amputee who was missing an arm and a leg on opposite sides of the body. The preferred technique so that you could use a crutch. Smart. His buff son-in-law, who was a Marine, beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> and I decided what I was doing was really, really stupid and dangerous. So he went to he he tried to make a movie about Nub City going, hey, what 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 the fuck? Why not why not try an MLM instead of chopping off your own foot, but nobody wanted to talk about it because apparently they were embarrassed <laughs> about the fact that they were fucking blowing their own digits off with guns and shit like that. <laughs> so instead, he made his movie about the crazy old geezers. And oh, there was one so guy who said ones. he said that he could write with both hands at the same time, which actually, I believe, because my grandmother's sister could do it. It was the freakiest thing. She could write like upside down. And if you said left hand upside down and right hand backwards, she could do it at the same time. Write her name or anything you wanted. It was fucking bananas. But but then he didn't show himself doing that in the movie. All he showed was that he could could spin his leg one way and his hand the other way at the same time. Yeah, you know the whole, oh, you can't pat your head and rub your stomach at the same time. Well, apparently what you can do is just fucking swish your foot along the ground and wave your arm sort of randomly. That's really in the in the movie. And the first thing the guy says is, you ever seen a man's brains? I've seen them. I've picked them up, scooped them up. <laughs> and he talks about how your brain has four somethings and if yeah, you use like all four, four broken into four compartments yeah if you use all four you're not a one track mind you're a four track mind yep and he's seen people who could write two letters on two different type machines at the same time one with each hand <laughs> and just let this sink in he was not one of the numbers he was too reasonable he was going around talking about the four quadrants of your brain and having superpowers. And he was the one that said, ah, yeah, me to chop off my own leg. That's ridiculous. I'm not doing that. That's crazy. Of course, you can't just absorb the beauty of what the Vernon city clerk called all the nuts in Vernon city. Cause she was mad about the movie. You can't watch it on YouTube uh-huh. without some fool missing the fucking point and commenting. Like I, I okay. I don't know if you, watch your feed on your phone, but this habit of people making quote unquote news stories about like tweets about a particular topic or a Reddit thread, that's not yeah an article. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone that's doing it, go fuck yourself. That's not a news source. Uh, and, uh, so this guy says, very nice country folks. I've lived in the same area for 60 years. It was rural and we grew up like these folks. Then they started developing the area and a bunch of city folks moved near us and Black things people. changed and not for the better. I long for the small town, slow paced life. For the folks who are dog in the video, just understand country don't mean stupid. Oh, and did. we are way more polite than city folks usually are. Shut give the you that. F- fuck up, YouTube commenter. <laughs> fuck. Why can't you just recognize the fact that every fucking place has 
fucking crazy people who think your brain has four quadrants. Walk down the street in New York for two seconds, <laughs> but you won't yeah. because city folks aren't nice. Like, fuck you, you Applebee's date night fuck. Like, I, I hate it. <laughs> You're right there, Well, champ. of course my place is the best place on earth because I've never been any other places, so there you go. <laughs> I've never even been to Chipley since they stole the county seat from us. <laughs> Did that YouTube commenter hit a nerve? Yes. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. And yeah, you are going to get eccentric people everywhere. But right now we're talking about this town and that movie where the couple has a jar of sand that they insist <laughs> is growing. <laughs> so what do we want to take away from all this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I forgot about the growing sand. So that's great. <laughs> but also they've been to the beach once, but it keeps getting higher and higher. I just want to say returned. one other thing. If you, if you're trying to say that it, country doesn't mean stupid, don't say country don't mean stupid, stupid. <laughs> All right. So here's how, here's how we're <laughs> wrapping up. In 1984, the town council president was presiding over a council meeting where they were talking about the firing of the only cop in the town. Hold on a second. Again, having seen the movie, I don't think it's much of a loss. <laughs> well, yeah, but I don't think it couldn't have been the same cop. Could it? It's only three years difference from the movie to then. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> He's like, uh, when I'm when I'm checking the radar, you know, I don't have it with me today. <laughs> yeah. All right. Literally my only job. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So anyway, they fired him. I'm just going to sit here. Yeah. And Narvel Armstrong who was the town council president. Some teacher was talking at the meeting, but Narvell was not having it. And she fucking adjourned the meeting. And if I can find the video clip, I'll post it. But the news, the news happened to be there for some reason. And this is from the, the Tampa Bay times. Armstrong, then 46, a slight woman with a white blouse and a helmet of brown hair walk past another woman and backhand her in the head. You see a barefoot young man join the fight. Barefoot. He (laughs) pins the teacher against the wall and stands over him. The teacher raises his hands to shield his head, but it doesn't work. The barefoot man's right fist is tireless. He clocks the teacher six times before the camera turns away. Later, you see the teacher's face covered in blood. You see an older man fighting, too. He's thick in the middle, balding, wearing khakis. He punches a woman while the barefoot man holds her arm. Punches her right in the tit, by the way. He assists in the thrashing of the teacher. Now, you see his right hand whooshing through the air, connecting with flesh, and you look for his left hand, but it's gone. And in its place is a metal hook. So a nubber was in the mix of this whole thing. Yep. And it seems like some small town folks really are nice if you can go to a town council meeting barefoot and end up kicking someone's ass. That's right. Why Why would you? I'm going to the town council meeting. You want to throw on some, some, some uh, I don't know, maybe some, some top siders? Nope. I'm going barefoot. <laughs> Mm-mm. But seriously, it was a big brain move because they had just fired the only cop. So the, the whole town was like dead dude. <laughs> like, you could do anything you wanted. <laughs> and now, because the the reporter from the Tampa Bay Times was fucking epic, and I cannot for the life of me find their name. I'm like, I'm really, really sad that I can't find their name it's no I, I can't find it and it's one of those things where you only get like three free articles uh yeah, yeah, yeah. a month or whatever yeah um, research budget doesn't pay for the 
Yeah, I know. I'm fucking signing up for the Tampa Bay Times. I don't care how the Rays are doing. Anyway, <laughs> in 2007, when the article was written, uh huh, the biggest thing they 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 talked about how everything was kind of falling apart. the The poverty rate improved somewhat, and unemployment had dropped, but most of them go to like Panama city to work for tour, you know, in tourism. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of them work at one of the two prisons that's near there. Cause oh. of course they do. Um, <laughs> but so there's, and they tell a happy story about this, this guy's at a store and they, they have the burn and burn of burn and Vernon burger. And it has its own rhyme. Vernon Vernon, oh what a treat with its onions and peppers stacked up so neat. It's not a very good rhyme. <laughs> but does it only do you only get like half a sandwich or is like probably, a part of it cut off? But or it's something? stacked neat. Well, they, you gotta be able to see the stack, so there's no top bun. Anyway, but it's <laughs> also got like a ton of Cajun sauce on it and fried jalapenos, like it's super, super fucking hot. Anyway, the thing that was going on in 2007 was that they were widening the State Road 79, which goes right through the middle of the town. And the reason they were widening it was so that people from the Redneck Riviera would be able to escape from hurricanes, which, to be fair, is a good thing, you know, having a nice wide road to be able to get out of the way of a hurricane, because that's happened... You know, there's been more than one time where people have tried to get away and they can't because the roads were all clogged up and whatever. But the town of Vernon was like, hey, you know, you could just you could just not put it through the middle of the town. And like literally trample a bunch of our businesses, including the place where the Vernon Vernon Burger is from. And the DVD store, which probably would to be fair, the DVD store would probably be gone now. This town didn't boom after the movie? That's surprising. No. Yeah, I know, right? They actually there's a sequel to the movie, but I don't I haven't watched it's like it. Like when like the really Olympics. I, I almost yeah. I almost did watch it, but then I couldn't find it. Well, here's the deal. This road. A spokesman from the Florida Department of Transportation said the city fathers and the county and the general public all came to a consensus that if the road went past Vernon, it would kill the city. Except if you asked everybody in Vernon, they all said the opposite. I don't like they I were all like, no. Listen to the people they, in Vernon, though. But there were two big exceptions. Yeah. One used to be the mayor of Vernon. He also used to work for the Department of Transportation. (laughs) And his house is at the edge of the road and it's not going to get torn down for the big road. And where it was previously assessed at $57,000 in value, it's now on the market. It was at the time on the market for $950,000. Yeah. This was one of the guys that said, no, yeah, no, you should definitely do it. Now, the other one. That's surprising. The other one that said, no, put it through the middle of town. Also is going to have their house become highway front property, which is going to jump its value from 22,000 to 365,000. Now. That second person, yeah. that second person smacked somebody in the fucking head at the council meeting in 1984. That was Narvel Armstrong. Oh, Jesus. She got suspended no by the governor for hitting the lady in the head. And she pled no contest to simple battery. She got away with a fine and a suspended sentence. Then she got reelected. And she recently, in 2007 anyway, got a certificate for 25 years of service for the from the Florida League of Cities. 
God. And the bitch was still on the council in 2007. So 23 years later. Except it's worse. Because the two people that you described in the video beating up the teacher and punching that lady in the right. tit. Right. The barefoot dude was Narvel's son. And the guy with the hook, that was her husband. <laughs> he died in 2002. And when she was asked by a reporter how her husband lost his hand, she said, I think you know. Oh, Jesus. So, even in a town that only has 700 people in it, two of them are fucking over the rest of them for money and getting away with it. And well, he was a nubber. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes all you need is a little nub money to get started. Yeah, I need, I need to stake a claim. Nub money will oh do my it. Oh, God. Yep. So I didn't expect that last little twist at the end. I thought this was just going to be a happy-go-lucky story about idiots chopping off their own arms. Oh, and by the way, because I'm so fucking thorough, I looked up, because this was all 2007 that it was all going down. I was Google mapping the shit out of of, of Vernon. That's where I found out that <laughs> they have an establishment called Big Jim's Smoking Butts. You can smell our butts oh, for boy. miles. Who's our other sponsor of this fucking episode? Big Jim Smoking Butts, Vernon, Florida. Big anyway. Jim Smoking Butts. In you see, I, you know, from what you said about, uh, from what you said before about like, you know, people out of work being lazy, I don't know that today's people would cut off their own limbs. That, I don't think. <laughs> I, I, I don't think so. <laughs> Although, I bet that the, I bet the, that if you go to work at Amazon, you have to sign some paper that like negates the amount that you get if you lose your arm or something. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. But uh, <laughs> oh, there was a kid I knew growing up that lost his arm. He or like from an elbow down. He went behind a pizza place, and in the dumpster, there was a dough kneading machine. Yeah. And I don't know what exactly happened, because I would think that it needed power. But whatever ended up happening, it ended up tearing like his arm off at the elbow. And this was like the 80s, so he, they couldn't put back. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. My he grandfather. got a ton of money for it. He bought a Camaro when he was like 16. Oh, that's kind of fun. Um, <laughs> my grandfather was it, like in way olden times. the The owner of the dairy was like the first person in the town to have a car, and it broke down. And, and of course, my grandfather figured he knew how to fix it, even though he'd literally never <laughs> seen one in his life. And uh, <laughs> and he got his thumb chopped off. And ah. <laughs> this is going to sound like one of those stupid old man stories, like that can't be true. <laughs> The owner of the dairy was like, I'd give you a ride to the hospital, but the car is still broken, so you have to walk. And <laughs> he put his thumb in a bag and walked to the hospital. <laughs> and uh, Nice. Anyways, on December 28th, 2020, they were just wrapping up the State Road 79 widening project. And uh, Really? Yep. That took a long time. And officials said it's going to reduce congestions along that corridor. Obviously, when you reduce congestion, you reduce the opportunity for crashes to occur. Safety is always going to be our number one mission. It's going to be a safer roadway for folks. It also acts as a hurricane evacuation route along the coast. A lot of lot of fatal accidents along this sleepy. Well, I mean, if you if you, were, if you were driving down the road and then you saw like eleven people that like are in a three legged race, but there's three people <laughs> and, <laughs> and a steamboat parade, you would be rubbernecking and getting in a crash for sure. <laughs> that's true. So that's the that's the story. So I guess if if 
I don't know. I just assume that if I ever try to get an insurance policy, they're going to be, they're going to think I'm up to something right off the bat. <laughs> you know what I mean? That'll be why you want yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to be doing some dangerous shit. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm making my own version of jackass. So I need a lot of insurance for my <laughs> limbs and whatnot. <laughs> Sir, get out of our office. <laughs> Come on, this arm is really good. Yeah, this is this is my good arm, so I won't be using that. I'll be signing the policy <laughs> with this one. The other one is the one I'll use to get all mangled. Uh, <laughs> Huey took a took a a lot of initiative this past week, and now oh shucks, I mean he didn't he didn't put my fucking link in it because he's a dickhead, but. If you want I was to, only a, it was it was only a prototype. Wait, I'll put a link in for you eventually. Wait, 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 wait. Times researchers Carolyn Eds and Mary Melstrom and computer assisted reporting specialist Connie Humberg contributed to this report. Thomas Lake can be reached at email address. So it was Thomas Lake that wrote the story. So good for you, Thomas Lake. Oh, okay. Um. So. You can go to where the fuck is it? Um, it there's there's two different com. ones. Yeah. Well, the one that's easiest to remember, I think, is yeah. allmylinks.com slash strangeful things. And that's where all the links yep. are. Yep. It's got and and I'll be updating it over the next uh by the time you listen to this, it'll all be updated. And you know what? Listen there, faithful listeners. Uh, you can always support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash strangeful. And sure, you put the Discord link on there, too. That's a good idea. Because otherwise, yeah, I no one on it. get to Discord. That's one of the ones they have, yeah. So I guess that is the entire story of Nub City. I don't think Nub there's ever City. been a city like it. Um, also, feel free to hit us up with your favorite kiss lyrics except none from the song christine 16 because i'm pretty sure that entire song is a crime now yeah that's that's bad i mean one of the lyrics is literally don't you remember when it was life was easier and you could sing about statutory rape and nobody cared when (laughs) (laughs) one of the one of the lyrics is when I saw her coming out of school that day. Like, <laughs> oh. what about what? That's not. That's nothing. That like that. My eyes adored you, though I never yeah, that, laid your hands on you. My eyes. Adored, it's like you uh, were third grade. I was twelve. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I think it was actually oh. seven six or something like that. But oh my god, this is right, even well. worse. Than, I just I just looked at some <laughs> of the lyrics and it's even worse than I thought. All right, everybody. Oh no! Um, no, it's worse. It's so much worse. Uh, oh Come my on, god! I can't something. even say it out. I don't usually say things like this to girls your age. That's how it starts. Ah, uh, can only go downhill. No, oh, it's that way downhill. Anything he says would be bad. <laughs> There's nothing. Yeah, nothing. But I need to talk to your father about my multi-level marketing scheme. That would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's that. Yep, everybody's better keep on flapping. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.